You guys might know Dan. Professor He's, he's the band. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I have to uh, apologize because I made a prepared statement because I think this is such an important issue about what to accept, what not to accept, our general approach. I wanted to make sure I didn't leave anything out. And I thought there'd be a three to five minutes to talk. <laughs> and then in the spirit of the city council, Raven announced. <laughs> 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 there's, there's no way. We'll give you an extra to, two minutes. Uh, right. <laughs> I, I won't be able to finish it. In, we know. <laughs> no, it's five minutes long, so just bear with us. Um, so I, I'm not on the water board, um, and so these opinions are my own, although I do work with water. Uh, we have all been um, working, participating to various extents on this issue in the past four years. We have all agreed on some important things that uh, Crystal Geyser's plans were harmful, that Crystal Geyser would be unlikely to leave town just because we pointed out that harmfulness, <laughs> that an EIR was a necessary step, but it would likely be a whitewash. We all knew we were heading towards a major milestone that was accomplished this month, filing of the petition for writ of mandate, otherwise technically known as suing bastards. <laughs> but because of the steady march of immediate concerns, one thing we have not done uh, much is talk about why we have been spending all this time. I'm going to suggest that we did it to be part of a worldwide movement toward fairness, equality, environmental health, peace, and economic democracy. We did not do it only to protect local residents from having to dig deeper wells at their own expense, nor to have a few more soundproofing panels installed, nor to have only uh, a few fewer trucks drive by, or more trucks during the day and less at night. <coughs> the justified dissatisfaction <coughs> of local residents about this, problem, about this project is real and those minor changes, if they ever happen, might slightly decrease their <coughs> dissatisfaction. But frankly, <clears throat> local residential discomfort does not begin to compare with the misery visited upon hundreds of millions of people every day by war, imperialist invasions, by deliberate policies of economic strangulation, by poverty, by disease, by lack of access to health care, lack of meaningful work, lack of hope, and lack of any institutional power to correct these problems. The four years we spent protecting the wells and the peace and quiet for Crystal Geyser's res residential neighbors could otherwise have been spent fighting over these clearly bigger and more dire issues. So why did we do it? I believe it was because we were working on bigger issues all along. We don't want major corporations to push people around and damage the national environment anywhere. Fighting Crystal Geyser is a local manifestation of that effort. This informs our view of upcoming mitigation talks. Our list of proposed mitigations is very strong. It basically puts the production quantities at Crystal Geyser in the hands of the community, where it belongs. Crystal Geyser will oppose that as a matter of principle. As an alternative, Crystal Geyser might toss us a couple of bones. The toss will not cost them much, because the toss will not challenge what we do indeed challenge, their so-called private property rights to do what they want with the air, water, and land. Mm -hmm. Those couple of bones, if offered at all, will convert a very bad project into a merely bad project. Mm -hmm. This project calls for the unlimited extraction of water, which Crystal Geyser itself says will be 10 times the amount of water consumed by all of the neighboring residences on wells put together. 
the effect on noise, traffic, air pollution, wastewater disposal is way beyond what a couple of bones can handle. This issue is not what our list of demands are. They are very strong, but the issue is what we might be willing to give away in negotiations. What Crystal Geyser wants in exchange for our accepting a bad project is for us to give up two things. First, our lawsuit, and second, our only real power, which derives solely from our persistence and our numbers and our alliances with others everywhere working against corporate power. How can we continue the struggle against corporate power when we settle for bones and then shut up? I know there's a temptation to compromise and bring home at least a few immediate nuggets. It's nice to win something, no matter how small. But rather than inspire anyone, to do so will, will generate righteous disillusionment and cynicism in the community, which expect better from us and paid for better and will make organizing on the next project much more difficult. Yes, those bones are worth a little bit, and we can pretend that it's a victory, but we would have not advanced the struggle over underlying issues of corporate power. We should not give up on demands that give the community a mandatory say in Crystal Geyser operations. Of course they won't accept that. It violates the principles of private enterprise, in which rich owners and man managers determine everything. Yes, we risk coming away with an immediate nothing by rejecting Crystal Geyser's disposable scraps. But by demanding what is right rather than what is likely, we would preserve a reputation for standing for principles and continuing the struggles with an ever-widening circle of activists throughout the county, state, nation, and world. That great outcome is not guaranteed, and it is certainly nothing immediate, but it is a real something in the longer run. It is a launching pad to actually winning some significant battles in the future. In the words of the great labor organizer of the United Mine Workers of the early 1900s, Mother Jones, quote, you lose, you lose, you lose, you lose, and then you win. <laughs>